Hey everyone, welcome to our online service. Praise God, thank you for joining us and uh, like separating your time and, and valuing this as something that's uh, really important to your life. So I just want to thank again our guys, Joel and Christian. Thank you for doing an awesome job of engineering and uh, this whole process of online services. Our prayer is that we would be able to use all these tools for you know, making our spiritual experience and growth more efficient. So, you know, we're praying for you during the week and I'm always blessed when you, uh, you know, when we can be in touch with you, really. So, I, I hope you had a great week of studies and, and uh, adventuring into your, into your life, into the maybe things regarding your future your hopes and dreams you know, please know that uh, the Heavenly Father He is uh, aware of all that you're going through and what you go what like what what your needs are and he wants us to learn how to entrust all of that and today is really the message we will in this message we're gonna touch on that briefly and so let's let's begin begin again as we did last week with just a few minutes of quietness and you know committing our hearts opening the door of our heart for for Christ Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of this day. What a beautiful day you made, so we can rejoice and be glad in it. We open the door of our heart to your word and to your love. May you guide us today and teach us with your Holy Spirit. That's what we need. We need your Holy Spirit to be our teacher and guide. And may these words help us to see you and know you deeper and be transformed little by little in our walk. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. So today we're going to read several verses uh, from the book of Romans. And if, if there is a book in the Bible that we could call the explanation of the gospel, this would be the book to read, Romans, book of Romans. It has 15, 16 chapters and it touches on so many topics, both theological and practical. Uh, you know, you could read it just like at once, the whole book, or you can read it chapter by chapter. Uh, but just, you know, this, 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 this is, some theologians called it even a fifth gospel because it's so powerful. It is so powerful. It is inspired by the Spirit. It is written by Apostle Paul. And it has so many you know, questions and answers that are 
really, really touches the depth of, our, of, of the human heart and being. And uh, we, we will look at one of the practical parts of this, of this book and, <clears throat> and read from Romans chapter 12. Let's open our Bibles. Uh, Romans chapter 12 and we will read verse 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. This is a powerful, powerful verses. So, by the way, my family sends their love and greetings to you. My wife and my kids are doing fine. And uh, just really, really blessed, really blessed. So this is this should be an introduction to our message, and uh, the topic that we are we want to discuss today is the what is it our what is our spiritual worship what is our spiritual worship so. <clears throat> And we will uh, uh, touch on the on the on these verses on these words, just in the midst of our, of our message. But what I want to say is that if you want to get to know God, like personally, intimately, really, like really get to know Him, we need to have a certain experience. Like if you would want to get to know me, you would need maybe to spend some time with me maybe come over to my home or I would need to come over maybe you know do something together go some places eat together you know either way just spend time and this would we would call an experience an engagement a fellowship and we need such an experience, but how, how can we get to know God? And you can see me clearly, even though I, you know, I, I'm not physically there with you, but you can see me on this screen. And you know this is not a fiction, this is a real person, I'm a real person. But how can I get to know God, whom I cannot see? This is, it's, it seems like, you know, an odd thing. <coughs> and. For that, we need what we call a transcendent experience. An experience that transcends the things that we can see and touch. And, and the way how God revealed Himself, He revealed to us through the Scriptures. This is one of His sources of revelation. Where He tells and unveils to us what He is like. And uh, the cool thing about it is that God did not unveil Himself just in one instance. He did not really, like even the Bible, it did not come like, you know, if, if, if you take some novel or fiction or some story, somebody, you know, sit down and they write this book, it maybe take them months, months and maybe years to write something and then it's, it's done. Some books are written really quickly today. Uh, because they are fictions and you read them it's exciting and God did not just you know through us didn't throw the Bible you know from heaven and said oh here you go this is who I am and you just can get to know me no God revealed himself slowly through the years through the centuries even and even the the millenniums he would uh, do that for the first man and then he he found another man and another man and another man and he would you know reveal himself to them that he would take a whole nation like a nation of Israel and he would reveal himself to this nation 
he would deal with this this nation and and this this what would be what we call an experience God would speak through the prophets he would do you know signs and miracles this you know, all of these experiences, they would tell who God is, that God is everywhere present, that He is love, that He has power and majesty. <coughs> all those things, they were revealed. In our times, we know that, we know who God is, especially in the New Covenant, because God has revealed Himself through His Son, Jesus Christ. And this is the, one of the most and the highest revelations of God that ever happened in this world, where God became a man. And this, we could say this was like the visible expression of the invisible God. And Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father, you see God. And, and, and still, not even all people could believe that. The, you know, the transcendent God who is above space and time and, and matter, He could become just like us, without sin though, of course. And He, as the Bible says, He revealed to us who God is. We could see Him. Uh, in, in John chapter 1, as I remember, verse 14 through 16, it says that law and the law came through Moses. You know, the, the, the Moses, this man, man of God, God gave through him all those commandments. And this was the revelation of God's, you know, justice and power and how he is, you know, holy and just and righteous. But then it says, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Grace and truth. This, this revelation of God's nature was like consummated in the person of Jesus and, it, and, it, it, and this is this is this is amazing this was the living word that became flesh and this is you know the Bible the purpose of the Bible you know the 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 most important purpose of the Bible besides teaching us history and you know the how God deals with us is to reveal to us the person of Christ his purpose of coming on earth and how it relates to personal, personally to you and I. So, we cannot just get this information from anywhere. This, uh, this revelation came specifically through certain you know, people in a certain time and through the certain uh, scripture this specific revelation, but then there is a general revelation and that general revelation of who God is also came to us in the form of nature, in the form of His creation. And Romans chapter 1 uh, delivers us a really great message. And when you're going to read this chapter, you will see this, and I'll read just a couple of verses, Romans chapter 1. And verse 19, for what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For His invisible attributes, namely His eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that, he, uh, that have been made. So they are without excuse. So apparently what God says that His inv invisible power became visible in all creation. How, like a man, when he looks at the nature, and as, 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 as historians want to tell us, and they tell us a lot, and some of the things, of course, are, you know, they're, they're true. You know, a lot of people in ancient times, they would worship nature. And this is what this scripture is saying, that people would worship creation of God as though it was God. Because they would look at it and they would, they would, you know, just be amazed. They would, they they would see that this creation is transcendent, is powerful. You know, the winds and the sun and the moon, and even, you know, the animals. People would worship the animals because.
because they would have they would uh, attribute to them some power you know in the Hindu culture people worship cows it's it, it sounds kind of interesting you know but it, it is you know people because they believe you know there is something divine about that animal and there are many other you know things that that man has been worshiping some people worship stars and but all of that was not made for worship. That all was made to reveal the one we, are, we need to worship. And this, this God made it in such a way that our experience and revelation of God would be also transcendent. That while we look at the stars and we look at their beauty, while we look at the mountains and, and you know lakes and ocean and you know all sort of things you know the big things and the small things that we would look at them with amazement and wonder and we would think about you know this high intelligence this high mind the big mind that has designed all of this <clears throat> so t nature teaches us about so much really and continually teaches us. It's just amazing that even all that man has made, you know, for example, the planes. Even the planes, you know, things that, you know, the engineers, they're using things that they see in nature, in birds. <clears throat> and they have integrated things that they've studied. And they, like, look at the birds, at how they fly. And they, you know, some of the principles, they took it from just from nature and actually you know I, I watched I think a movie somewhere where uh, they talk about it that a lot of inventions that man has they, they look into the nature like the fish and, and the birds and other things and they realize that this is this is amazing and man uses that to invent other things so you know all this you know it's it's amazing you know the infinite distances of in the universe billions of galaxies and I mean I, I'm gonna I'm gonna post on our Facebook page uh, a video of a, of a guy by Louis Giglion it's called indescribable and he teaches about universe he described you know all some galaxies and how they they're formed and you know their vastness and, and then it compares to us how we are small and then and then he points us to one most important event in history which this God of universe you know this amazing great God he becomes small to introduce us to a relationship to a personal living relationship why because he's in love with us this is why and this is how we can know the, the love of God is that like all of these things you know the air I'm, I'm breathing right now this air there are like planets in our solar systems where you can't breathe air if you would be placed there if you would live there but here we can have it we have water we have sunshine we have air we have things that we are using and we're like we don't even think about that but if you take just one component out of this picture we would die if you take air if you take make it different if you take sun away it's like the whole world is going to change but all of this made is called intelligent design is because there is a designer but more more most important is that you know we are designed you and I are designed by this maker and, and this maker wants us to be in relationship with him. And the time and space, you know, the limitations of our body, and then also sin has entered into our life. And this, what this ha what it has done, what sin has done to, the, to man, it has put him like in a sort of cave. If you can imagine, like you would be born in a cave. <laughs> You become small there, you grow up, but you always live in a cave. And the only world you perceive is the world that is in this cave. 
you know, you can do things in the cave. You can breathe, you can create stuff, you can work even there. But it's still a small world. It's a limited world. And you can believe even that this is, there is the only world there is. But then somebody tells you, hey, listen, there is another world. And they take you out of the cave and they show you this amazing distances and beauty and the sunsets and sunshine and oceans. And you say, jeez, I, I, I didn't know that. I thought this is the only world. And believe me, there are a lot of people who believe there is no God. They don't need God. They actually think that they are sort of God themselves. And that they, 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 they create their own reality and they live in that reality. And they think that this is the only reality there is. And that spiritual blindness is what we, we would call this uh, <clears throat> a cave. That a man lives if he lives without God. And we require a revelation of God. And God put here and there so many proofs of His existence. And even many scientists today, when they look at all of this, and if they're, like if they're honest, and many honest scientists, they say, there is a God. There is, we can't explain everything. But there is a God. He has a name. And you and I know the name of that God. And you and I have been introduced, you've been given a revelation, and this is just not my initiative, this is not my thing. God Himself wants you to know Him. This is how much He loves you, and He wants you to be in a relationship with you. And to understand this even better, in closing, I just want to give you another example. You know, we all love our gadgets, you know, we love our phones, you know, tablets, and the reason we, they're cool, because you know, there is content, there is capabilities they have. They have give us access to many things, access to many things. And these, you know, these phones and iPhones, they need a system, they need a processor, memory, RAM. Then we need to install an app, a lot of apps. I mean, this is actually that makes it worth it. I mean, if you just get a, a phone without all of these features, it's, it's just useless, right? And, and we look at these things and we say, geez, it's, it's like, it's powerful because it, it gives me, it enlarges my life, it enlarges my world. And we are, I would say like this, we are also like all those gadgets. We are. Just picture how God created all of us. You know, when you and I were born into this world, we are born blank. We are totally blank. Our consciousness doesn't have a memory. It does not have knowledge. It's all being installed in us. It takes years. First, maybe three years, we are like, we're growing actually like pets. <laughs> we eat, we poop, <laughs> we cry, we want to eat, and, and we're just like, we're entertained like pets. We obey, we disobey, like, and, uh, you know, maybe find something but funny, but it is. And we are learning. Someone else install into us like the kindness, responsibility, wisdom, you know, basic knowledge, basic abilities and capabilities. We are so complex actually. We are so complex. You know, this, this computer right here is like one of the most complex and most sophisticated feature in the creation of the world. Because this brain controls, like the, it's so fast. It controls, you know, my body movements. It controls my thoughts. It controls what I do and say. Just, it's, it's incredible. We are like such a complex gadget, I would say. And we have so much installed into us. We've been given a spirit and a soul. And this part of us, which is which is Bible calls spirit, is what was made for worship to God. In this spirit, God communicates to us about our true identity, we're, we're, that we are not just animals. We are homo sapiens, we are intelligent beings, capable not of only like <coughs> procreating and you know just eating and having you know, just pleasures, 
but also we are a, have capable of processing things in our mind. We are, we are capable of love. We are capable of kindness. We are capable of you know being wise. We are capable of discerning. We are capable of being caring and so forth. We are, these virtues, virtues we call them, characteristics, are attributes of human being, or the fruit of the spirit. This is what needs to be grown into our life to make us like Christ. And that, that is why it is so important what we are taking in, what we are listening and receiving, so that this gadget would glorify God and also would give us peace of mind and joy and and right purpose. And this is what like we are why we're coming back to this verse in Romans 12. Paul is saying that our body, we can offer it to God. We offer it to God. And he's appealing, he's asking, by the mercies of God, present your body as a living sacrifice. It's like sacrifices would be always in the Bible, in the Old Testament, that would be a dead sacrifice. The sacrifice to be a sacrifice, they need to die. But thankfully, we don't need to die. We can bring ourselves as a living sacrifice, which means that I offer myself. I uh, just uh, how how do I how what does it mean? Is that I come before God and ask Him to fill me. I ask Him to lead me, or maybe to lead, guide me, and lead me away from harmful things. And we. Like he says here uh, in verse 2, in verse 1 says that a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. I, I don't know what it is yet, but I need a revelation of that. How can my life can be holy and acceptable to God? And the verse 2 it says, how it can happen that we do not conform to the world. I mean the world around us is appealing. It's it's sending us a lot of messages, things we, we, we need to do. And we are very busy people. It's easy like to just take the world and, and, and try to copy it. What means conform is trying to copy. To let it, in, you know, we would install everything the world offers to us. We, in, we install that knowledge, we, we install that attitudes, right? And if we're just installing all that the world is offering us, we are going to look like the world. But he says, don't be conformed to the world. Don't try to copy the world. Don't just blindly install that information, all those attitudes and thoughts and desires that the world is offering us. But he says, but be renewed. But be transformed by the renewal of your mind. This mind is a powerful, powerful tool that allows us to think, allows us to test, to differentiate, to discern what is right, what is not right, and how we can present our bodies to God is that we, bec we become renewed. I mean, we live in a real world which affects us, which makes us kind of a little bit dirty. You know, it, it throws things at us. We maybe go through conflicts and we feel, we feel bad. And the way we can do that is we need a washing. We need a spiritual worship. We need a transcendent, as we said, experience with God. We need a worship. And th therefore it says that we present our bodies to God. And we can, we can do it like this. We say, God, this is my body. This is my mind. I want this mind to think with you. I want my hands, my feet, my body to, you know, to please you, do things that you want it to do. I want, I don't want just to grab things, I want to test them. This is what it says, why we need renewal of our mind, 
so that by testing we may discern what is the will of God. We don't know it right away, but we can test it by being renewed in our mind. And how does that happen? We renew our mind by abiding in Him, by abiding in His Word, by praising Him, by fellowshipping in, his, in the light, by fellowshipping with like-minded people. And especially at our age, and I'm still young, and you're younger even, you know, we can be easily influenced by, by friends, by good friends or not good friends, their attitudes, their minds. And therefore, you know, the fellowship is important. Who are, the, who are those people who are influencing us? Most of it is maybe your folks, your parents, they have influenced, they installed a lot of wonderful things into your life. And we also need a mentor. I am a mentor. Joel is a mentor. You know, other leaders are also mentors here, right? And John, and all, all others. We all, we, you know, we're sort of mentors. And when we have issues, when we have problems, we don't have to just deal up on our own and struggle. We can just call and fellowship, and ask questions, ask for prayer. I mean, this could be maybe, we can think, oh, it could be humiliating to say something about your weakness, about your struggle, but it, it, it's, it, it doesn't have to be. Nobody condemns you and judges you. Nobody thinks that you are worse than anybody. It is okay to share your struggle, because somebody else has already gone through that. I've gone through a lot of trouble and a lot of struggles, and I can maybe help you with something. Don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. If you need like to call me or ask me a question before I ask you a question and I may ask you I may, I may call you send a message but please believe me we have a heart after God and we want you to grow we want you to learn how to discern in this world how to navigate through this world and not to not allow certain things to harm you and install into your life like an app and lead you astray and even if you go astray, God is gracious and He will help you and woo you back at a certain time. But we don't have to go all, you know, try everything, the worst things, to, to, to make sure that, you know, I, I don't want them. We, you know, others can share wisdom with us. The Bible shares wisdom with us. You know, you know turn on a message during the week, maybe a couple messages, listen a couple messages, this message, other messages. And we maybe will be recommending more, me and Joel, recommending maybe something to listen during the week. You know, turn on the praise music. I loved praise music when I was your age. I loved listening to praise music and worshiping with other, you know, other singers and have my soul elevated and my spirit being elevated and have an experience with God. Now this is what this is all for, the Bible, the, the praise, you know, our messages, our friendships, our, you know, the mentorship is for the sake of getting a transcendent experience with God. So we could have a spiritual worship, so we could have a renewal, so we could discern what is the perfect and acceptable and holy will of God and, and just have and live in that will to the fullest extent. So this week, please, just come to God and say, God, this is my body. Help me, lead me, fill me. Lead me not into temptation. You can read the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6. Just read that prayer, you know, prayerfully read each verse. And make it your prayer. Because in that prayer you will think like, like Jesus saying, you know, thank you for all you providing for your daily needs. Don't lead me into temptation, but deliver me from evil. God, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And, and you will get to know God. You're like, you're letting know God. God, I'm available. I'm open for relationship. I'm open. I want that. And God will guide you specifically, point you into His will. Of where you need to make be maybe need to make another step. Who will be a good good friend? 
what things you want to read and explore so you could have a heart of faith in this very interesting times that we live in. So, God bless you and let's pray. Thank you, Lord. We, we want to say, I want to say right now, Lord, this is my body, this is my mind, my hands and feet, my heart. I say to you, God, I am open, I am free, I am available, that you would install into my life things that will transform me. Not copy the world, but be transformed in my mind by you. I want to say thank you that you revealed yourself through Jesus. Thank you for this great gift that you've given us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who is right now with us and in us. And we just humble before you. We thank you that you are with us. Thank you for all these beautiful gifts, for the sun, for the air, for everything you've given us so we can have a life of worship. Teach us how to worship. Teach us how to be renewed every day and to be like you in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, please follow us on Facebook and maybe we'll post, start posting more on Instagram. And follow, you know, follow Jesus Christ hard because He is the one that loves you the most and will love you too and we'll be waiting to hear from you. God bless. See ya.